Hello, today I'm going to be showing you how to detect a player's collision with a game object in Unity using C Sharp. Right here we've got a uh, player, a rigid body player, we need the rigid body in order for the script to work, we need the rigid body to detect the collision properly. Got a game object with a, with a collider on it, a pretty large collider just so we can detect it better, a lot easier. And we got one with the trigger as well, again large, just so we can detect it better. I'm going to press play here and I'll show you an example of how you could use this script. This is just a simple one that just creates a little message down the bottom saying like, comment, subscribe, a bit cheeky, but you know, it shows how it works, it just, when you enter it, something will happen. If you want that, and you want to edit it yourself to whoever you want, the, I'll put it in the description. It's open source code, you can just use it how you want, my little gift to you. But, I'm also going to show you how you can use it in a different way. I'm going to try and rotate the objects when you collide or get in the trigger area, using your player. So we'll call this on player collision. You can call it whatever you want, but that's easiest for me. Gonna open it up in MonoDevelop. Head over to MonoDevelop, and you'll see here it starts with start and update. Don't need those, delete those, gonna call it whatever we want. We're gonna start off by making a float speed of 40. Why not? This will make the it will come in handy later, but it will make the rotation a lot faster. Just because we want to properly see what's going to happen, what the physical change in the scene, so we can see it's doing something. We're going to put on collision stay, so that every update that your, that your player is still colliding, it will call this function. We're going to put collision other. The other just defines what we're going to write in the future, and the collision just detects that it is being collided with. Got to have the curly brackets. I like having them closer up here. Then we're going to do an if statement to say if the other collision is going to have the tag of the player. Play with capital P just because that's how Unity defines it itself. Curly brackets for the if statement. I like moving them down. It's how you choose to like them, but. And this is where we're going to rotate the object. So just game object dot transform. We use the wrong game object. We need a little g. Game object dot transform dot rotate. This will just rotate the object, and we're going to define it as vector three. So 3D space. We're forward. Why not? It'll look cool. Times time delta time. Just so, so that. As time passes, it will do this, and then we'll do it times speed. How do I do times speed? That should be right. Okay, and we'll also just quickly do. We'll call a function for later, just to show that you can do more with this than just what I've put in. So you can. What I want to show with this is that you can actually on the collision call something in the future. You can put this as whatever you want if you wanted to call something else, but I'll just put it as debug.log. Like, if I can spell right. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Bit cheeky. Gotta have it. Gotta advertise. And I like my curly brackets like that. However you like them is however you like them. So now for the trigger. We want on trigger stay, a bit different, but not much. And this time we want on collider other, which is something that actually messed me up a lot. I always got confused which is which if they were the same. And um, we can just copy and paste this from the last one because it's pretty much the same thing. Except this time I'm going to change forward for up, just so we can see if there's a difference in them. So this is all you need, and it will hopefully rotate when we go back into the scene. Also you need to change the player's game object to have the tag of player. Unity defines it already, but you know, you can to whatever you want. And, and hopefully when we go into this, it should rotate the object and give you a little comment in the bottom left corner. Go to the other one, see if this works. Yep, looks like it's spinning. So I hope you like this tutorial. 
all the code that I've used will be in the comments in case you want to use it yourself. You can edit however you like. The first example is much easier to edit, the second is just a funny little example of how you could use it. And I hope you like this video. Hope you join me in the future for any more tutorials I will do. Thank you.